the human. And maybe that's why. Ndibo, where's <laughs> when? The leader of the Igbo nation, Chief Dr. Emmanuel Iwanya on CFR, and President General of Ohanes and Ibo, worldwide. Our dear Chief Host, His Excellency Governor Hoku Zadima of Imo State. His Excellency Governor Peter Mba of Enugu State. His Excellency Governor Chukuma Sumido of Anambra State. His Excellency Governor Alex Oti of Adria State. I am informed that my own governor, His Excellency Governor Francis Bridge, is on his way. The Royal Majesty Abogidin Naimeka Achebe will be your furniture and other royal fathers present. My Lord, Most Archbishop Raphael Opoko and other members of the clergy present. Honorable Minister of State for Labor, Honorable Nkiruka Onye Georgia, my own brother and friend, most distinguished Senator Adolphus Wabara, former President of the Senate. Your Excellency, distinguished Senator General, former Governor of Illinois State, Ike Mwachuku. Distinguished Senator Ifan Yoba, Distinguished Senator Uche Kunife, Distinguished Senator Ben Obi, and a whole lot of other members of the National Assembly I am not able to identify. Former Governor Hakim of Imbo State, and a whole lot of other former governors, former ministers, and former members of the National Assembly present. Heads of security agencies present, Honorable Mrs. Josephine Anene, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and permit me to stand on all other existing protocols that had been established. I am extremely delighted to welcome all of you to this August summit. This gathering today, to my recollection, is the first of its kind in a long time. What comes close to this kind of gathering? We are all able men and women in public and private endeavors are assembled together was the Ahiajoko lecture series that has not held for a long time now. So let me therefore thank most profoundly our dear governors under the ages of the Southeast Governors Forum for demonstrating leadership by convening this summit. I would like to thank the leadership of Ohaneze, Ohaneze Ndibu, under his President General, Chief Dr. Emmanuel Iwanyan, CFR, for supporting this summit and mobilizing our people to attend. I have special thanks for the summit organizing committee headed by our own dear distinguished senator, Chris Anyan. I thank you all. I congratulate you, ma'am. As we are gathered today, we acknowledge that we as Ndibo, like the rest of Nigeria, are facing very serious security and economic challenges. We are here to show our collective will, our determination and our solidarity in the search for solutions to our challenges. Above all, we are here to send a clear message to our people at home and abroad and to our, and to our fellow Nigerians that the Igbo nation strives to become more cohesive in order to be more effective in contributing its quota in the search for national consensus on equity, peace, and development. The theme of this summit can never be more apt. I, Southeast Beyond 2023, time for research, as it focuses on the security and economic realities on ground. Accordingly, I believe that this summit presents to us a platform for deep, deeper reflection 
on our situation and more particularly on what should be our best approaches and attitudes going forward. Let me state up front that in this summit, A, we need deeper reflection on how best to pursue our rightful place in the Nigerian Federation. B, we must reconsider our present direction of development, that is, our social and economic priorities and choices. And lastly, we must agree on how to further engage our young brothers and sisters involved with Biafran agitation to reconsider the idea, because no wise man goes to war with himself. Hence, after the war, you either kill yourself or wound yourself badly. Ladies and gentlemen, I am also aware that our Ebu governors have set out in their respective states to address most of the issues we are going to discuss in this summit. For instance, I am aware that in addition to the security initiative in each and every Southeast state, His Excellency Governor Chuvu Masoludo just held an Ambro Economic Summit. Governor Peter Mba of Enugu State just had economic roundtable. Governor Hopu Zodema of Imo State is developing a new economic corridor in Ubuta. Governor Francis Mwivuru of Ebony State is developing a new industrial and youth enterprise program. And Governor Lex Oti of uh, Abia State is reviving Aba as a new economic corridor. Consequently, this summit is not intended to dish out directives or to, is not intended to dish out directives to our governors, but rather to create a platform to share new ideas and understanding on areas of collaborations and integration. In view of the above, I shall therefore only randomly pinpoint a few of my observations which the summit may wish to consider. One, in the 1960s, the economy of Southeast was rated the fastest growing regional economy in the world due to the pragmatic and planned economic policies of the then Michael Opara administration. At that time, we had not just the rise of industries, but planned industrial corridors or industrial estates, if you like, all over eastern Nigeria. All the corridors were serviced by the then governments with roads, water, electricity, and so on. What you have mentioned, among others, are Abia, Aba Industrial Estate, Transamadi Industrial Estate, MNA Industrial Estate, Aba Road Industrial Corridor in Omaha, Cashew Plantation, Oil Palm Plantation, and so on. From these industrial estates, we have Golden Guinea Breweries, Modern Ceramics Industries, Aba Glass Industries, Nigerian Breweries Industries, PZ Industries, Igu Cement in Calago, Portland Cement Calabar, Amarako Power Station, the first independent power plant in Nigeria, and so on. But since 1999, that's about 24 years ago, the attention of our governments have shifted. No government in eastern Nigeria has considered it needful to service industrial corridors and attract private sector investors to set up factories in those corridors. The implication of this is the constriction of employment opportunities for our young school leavers whose numbers have multiplied. According to James Baldwin, the most dangerous creation of any society is the man who has nothing to lose. This may be the reason for the upsurge of crime and criminality in our zone. In the words of Robert Kennedy, every society gives the kind of criminals they deserve. We need to rethink our developmental priorities in accordance with the needs of the moment. I make bold to say that policy choices and prioritization are fundamental responsibility of leadership. Two, in the 1970s and 80s, Southeast was known for its special entrepreneurship apprenticeship system. It was one of the most unique and fastest growing of its kind in the world. It is therefore ironic that as this system is beginning to catch global attention for serious study and wider adaptation, it is now under severe stress here at home. To worsen matters, successive governments cared little about the collapse of technical secondary schools, 
which would have supported our budding entrepreneurs. It is my honest recommendation that we should collectively re-engineer this entrepreneurial system, make it fit for the changing times, and ensure that it remains one of our unique contributions to the new global economic direction. Three, as a young Nigerian leader, I was privileged to learn at the feet of many of our elders. The late Super Permanent Secretary at Large, Ahmed Joda, was one of them. He once told me that the first generation Nigerian universities were planned and built as part of the National Economic Plan. According to him, before any university was built, a five-year plan was factored into the National Economic Plan to accommodate their graduates. The courses and curricula of those universities were also tailored to areas of national needs. That was why jobs were waiting for the graduates even before they concluded their studies. Today, we do not undertake such rigorous planning to continuously align our educational system with our national or regional needs. This, no doubt, is part of the reason for the unprecedented unemployment with a consequential effect on insecurity in our zone. I call for a return. Educational institutions should be an integral part of the socio-economic agenda of our governments. Accordingly, educational institutions should be planned as an economic institution with the aim to solve or set economic goals. Four, I observed that in the 1960s, government officials and elected representatives struggled to make ends meet. But today, the shortest cut to affluence and fame is to have access to government appointments or be elected as an honorable member. This has created an unhealthy competition in the politics of our time, leading to militarization of our political processes and its consequential effect on insecurity. We need a return because the arms used during elections do not decay hereafter. Five, there is clearly an exhaust between the current high level of insecurity in the southeast and the fact that some criminal elements are unleashing mayhem under the cover of agitation for Biafra. We must emphasize that the circumstances that led to Biafra agitation in 1967 is not the same as what is happening today. Therefore, we must endeavor to point out the difference in the present agitation. Today, we do not have anything that in any way approximates to the situation in 1967. There is absolutely no consensus on the purpose, content, method, and boundaries of today's Biafra agitation. I therefore call, call for a return by all those involved in this agitation. In rethinking the Biafra agitation, we need to honestly articulate what have been, what have been the outcomes or impact of the agitation so far. For example, in my own opinion, in the last four years, every Monday had been declared by some non-state actors as sit at home day. The enforcement had been brutally lead brutal, leading to enormous loss of lives and property. It is estimated that hundreds of lives and hundreds of billions of naira have been lost to the sit at home order and its enforcement. Two, life has become very difficult in the southeast. And almost every successful person in the southeast is in self-exile. If care is not taken, very soon, none of us will come home, no matter the number of security personnel you carry. Three, social and economic activities have been dislocated. Businesses have collapsed. No social activity can, can any longer safely take place in the zone. And no new businesses have been attracted to the zone. If care is not taken, very soon, every means of livelihood in the zone may dry up. Heavy arms and ammunition have become instruments of political campaigns, resulting in gross voter apathy. If care is not taken, very soon, Southeast will lose national political relevance, as votes from Southeast will no longer be of any consequence. Crime and criminality have become widespread in Southeast because Common criminals have taken advantage of the, of the agitation to advance their influence enterprise. Ladies and gentlemen, 
in view of the above, I call for the following actions. We must articulate and put on record the human, material and, so and social losses occasioned by this insecurity. This data may appeal to the senses of our young men and women who are involved in this agitation and, may have been, may, and who may have been underestimated the impact and consequences of the carnage. The data may also attract the sympathy of those who are in a position to help us out. Two, so, we must as leaders state very clearly and put on record our common position on this agitation. Third, we must be bold to identify and put on record our position on the causes and solutions to this insecurity in the Southeast. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, mine is to welcome you to this summit. But in addition, let me urge you to speak up. We must go out of here. We must go out of here with clear vision and direction of where we are going and how and when to get here and when to get there. We must not wait this rare opportunity. Again, I say, Ndibu, the day is today and the time is now. I thank you all. Uh, can we put our hands together one more time for His Excellency, the former Senate President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Distinguished Senator Ayim Pius Ayim. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this summit is strictly to reset our priorities to the Southeast.